I am Matthew Thomas. You are watching Super Cool Radio. I am here at the Dirty White Couch Studio in Mishawaka, Indiana. My guest this time, you wanted the best, you got the best, most macho band in the world. Please welcome Hourglass. All right. Hey. That was pretty good. You should have said you wanted the best they couldn't be here. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but that's okay. Well, we'll I have to we'll make you guys sound good. But, yeah. So I gotta make you sound, get well, sound we better. We gotta sound humble afterwards, too. That's the next step. <laughs> oh, oh thank you. I, I know I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, make it up. Hourglass joining me at this time. We got Andrew on guitar and vocals and his brother Alec on bass. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Third time here on Super Cool Radio. Yeah. Three's a charm. Uh, first time this season. I know we did two uh, last season. Which, my first ever interview without a net, which, it went okay. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. For, for no Quality. notes. Not like I use notes anyway. I mean, what are these? Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, that's the script. Yes. That we're totally off right now. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so before, because I know we got a lot to discuss. I know you guys are working on some super cool things. But uh, before we dive, on, uh, dive into that, there we go. Uh, I know you guys have gone to many great concerts, as we've talked about in our previous interviews. So, like, who's some of the best bands you guys have seen or that Hourglass has played with? Okay, let's start, start at the top. <laughs> Billy Squire was pretty good when I saw him. Uh, Cheap Trick was good. Highly Suspect, good. This is a good point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, and... Uh, May, Andrew and I saw Mark Farner. I've been listening to Grand Funk a lot, and uh, I think that oh, was... Nice. Uh, very macho concert and then uh you know cheap trick like andrew said is always good alice cooper very yes. powerful and uh guar is always fun sorry andrew but they're fun anyway that was good, <laughs> yeah. as far as we played with uh well, we like playing with medicine wives we like playing good with people autumn academy we like playing with choke setter we like playing with i think those are our top three who else I think you listed four, but yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of macho, powerful local bands, you know. Yeah, uh, I've seen you guys. I think three. I want to say three times. Perhaps. Um, yes, I'm sort of confident on that. I saw you. Let's see at the Five Star Dive Bar, which that was which our was, first real show. Which is kind of funny because I know like it wasn't you guys' equipment they were using for it, but yeah. it was, <laughs> you were trying to hit a pedal was fun. <laughs> I didn't know how to work it. <laughs> it was it Helix or something? Uh, I got to put like a whammy on my bass at the end too, yeah. which is cool. <laughs> I should get one of those actually, but I don't bass know what I'd use it on. Yeah. Just for, just do it just turn into the song. Like, yeah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Annoy this guy. Yeah, but that's my job. Put some flair. Put, some, put, some, put a little flair on it. Wah is overused. <laughs> but underused on bass. <laughs> True. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, or just be like Royal Blood who uses the bass and he acts like a guitar. See? No, no, that's tasty. Yeah. We were supposed to see them last year and then... Obviously, no. It got canceled for reasons. Yeah, we were control. supposed to see them and then instead we got booked on a show and then that show then got, got canceled. canceled. <laughs> and then we were like, all right, at least we can see Royal Blood and then that nope. got canceled too. <laughs> Good times. So then the second time was the EP release party, which uh, you guys let me do an intro for, which is nice to actually... Uh, be on stage, not like I do that very often, yeah. so it was very much yeah. appreciated. I tried to make you guys sound cool as I try to do. We sounded super cool. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, uh, very recently with Tantric. Yes, that was another That's macho right. show. Yeah. That was a good one. You guys messing with Wise. Love Sick Radio is really good. I heard a lot about them, so it was actually cool to actually uh, get to see them. They were pretty nice. They talked to us, at least, on like the fourth page <laughs> on the <bill. laughs> We heard them talk, but we didn't talk to them. <laughs> we've, heard, we've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think just me real quick, because that's my interview. I can talk about what I want. Yeah. Uh, I, Alice Cooper is number one, in my opinion, uh, just because I love Alice Cooper. So Good man. He's powerful. Um, I would say I, Rob Zombie was cool to see, because uh, he actually he walked through the crowd. And he like walked right by us. Mm. So that was awesome. Uh, Did you tug at his beard? Dreadlocks. Yeah, he had the dreadlocks. Yeah, oh. he went back to dreadlocks. It was him and Corn, uh, and they brought back the dreadlocks, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, and then uh, Bayside, uh, they were cool. Uh, mm. I think they're really underrated. Uh, just the crowd was so into that show uh, that it was it was pretty insane. I don't know if I've ever heard of them. You should check them out. They're pretty good. They're rock and roll. Uh, they're from New York, I think. 
yoke. Don't, yoke. don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, quote Matthew Thomas. No, don't do that. <laughs> no. All right, so a big thing I want to discuss, and I've listened to this because I am privileged enough to uh, hear this before it's, it, it'll be released on the 21st. September 21st. We're already in September. Some people might not know. Okay. Uh, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, which is an interesting day to release it, but it's still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, September 21st, if you don't know, but you, you should, you should already know before I say this, uh, you guys um, will, be, will, will release a new single entitled Moonchild. Uh, so, how was it? There's the cover. Oh, I'm wearing the cover? <laughs> yeah. yeah, people don't know that yet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, uh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, you're the first to know. <laughs> yes! <laughs> See? All the hot information right here on Super Cool Radio that I don't even know firsthand. Except, uh, it'll be it'll be black. Just but, invert the oh, colors, invert? basically. Yeah, but that's still that color, I think. Well, it, yeah, it pretty much looks like that. The same design, color may vary. <laughs> Which our drummer TJ designed that. Yeah, it looks, I, I really like it. it. Looks it looks very cool. So actually, I would say super cool in my opinion. That's right. Uh, so I got to listen to it. I listened to it uh, at least once. No, I'm just kidding. Cool. Twice. Uh, a couple times while preparing my notes. And uh, so how was it writing and recording the single? Alec, you want to start? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, in terms of writing, Andrew had the main song. And uh, him and I practiced that back in the day, like, I think over a year ago. And uh, it was originally, like, ten minutes or something when we <laughs> timed it. And then uh, we were like, you know... Ten minutes might be a little too long. Let's cut that so in half. We cut off like the last two verses in the chorus or something like that, and uh, that uh, that ended up sounding good. It's still about what six minutes, almost six minutes. It's yeah, like five yeah. fifty-five or something Somewhere like that. Like that. And um, you know, with a song like that, it just sort of evolves as you play it. You know, originally we played it with our old drummer, and then uh, with TJ, then he added stuff to it, like the good old boom, boom. Yeah. You know, before the the, uh, the toms in the chorus. So yeah, good. and uh, bass, speaking for myself, gradually evolved from the first time we played it to just me messing around with different stuff. And uh, that's all I got to say about the uh, writing and recording, yeah. or well, the writing of it anyway. Yeah, uh, so that was one, I think we played it once with our old drummer, and it was not up to par. Uh, so we were kept working on it, Alec and I, and then when TJ joined us last year, sent him stuff to learn, and we had that, and uh, he really liked that one. So the three of us started working on it more as far as arrangements and like, um, you know, how loud or heavy certain parts should be and stuff like that. And uh, I think the first time we played it was in Fort Wayne. So we had a live recording of it, and that helped me vocally with it because some stuff I had in there sounded bad, and so I learned not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What am I doing? Let's not do that. No. Like, don't do that. That sucks. <laughs> and uh, like guitar solos, and uh, then I think after hearing that, I think Alec probably came up with different bass parts. Maybe I don't know. I'm just guessing. And then yeah. TJ came up with a couple of different drum parts. And uh, and then uh, like we went to that second shutdown last year, so then I kind of yeah. forgot about it. And then uh, I think DJ and I were drinking at Shine Bar one night. <laughs> Perfect time to discuss he's business. Like, he's like, "What's that song, Moonchild?" <laughs> I was like, "That's that's a good one. We should record that one." And so then that kind of got all of our brains going to uh, maybe do put it out as a single this year. So let's see. We did shows first time in March. And then in May, and then uh, then we started doing like pre-production in our rehearsal room, and, uh, and then we came here to Dirty White Couch with Andy Peck and Trey Gray, and recorded it July fifth, which was a Monday. Uh, I believe we came here at four o'clock in the afternoon. Not four a.m. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> that's not the perfect. It's about the time we went to bed. Yeah, that's a good time to fall asleep. <laughs> but uh, recording it, it's very easy actually. We uh, so the basic tracks we did in this room live, drums, bass, and guitar, did it in three takes. 
Um, we used the first and second. Didn't no. use the third, I don't think, did we? No, we didn't use the first. I think oh. we used the second and the third. That's Come on. okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, um, I overdubbed guitar solos right here. And uh, exactly right there. Overdubbed vocals over there in the vocal booth room. Um, I think the actual recording was like only an hour or two. So it took like an hour setting up recording for an hour or two and then um, just sat around and hung out afterwards and talked about stuff with Trey. He's a funny guy. <laughs> it's a decent way to describe him. <laughs> I've heard he's a character. Yeah. He's a good man. <laughs> All right, so before I, before I talk about my thoughts about it, because I've, I've listened to it, uh, what can people expect from this single, like musically, lyrically, vibe, uh, I, <laughs> I, I think uh, drums and guitar and bass and vocals. I think this is the quintessential Hourglass song thus far, I would say. Uh, if you like the EP and you like the live stuff we put out, uh, I think this will be even better, maybe. Do you want to add <laughs> some or you want me to talk about it? Yeah, well, uh, you think <laughs> <Yeah>. about <laughs> it's it's good. Like it's a mixture of you listen. If you've listened to the EP, think of this song as like putting all four of those songs together. There's that's like good. yeah, that's the, a good way. There's like the heaviness yeah. of rhythm of a gun to it. There's you know, so, and parts of it. There's the slowness of uh, she'll be coming soon, and then just the uh, good like rock and roll vibes that like hourglass smile and on my own has. But uh, it's like that, but bigger you know because uh, macho yeah like if you have an ep you gotta have you know, like normal length songs six minutes it's not extremely long but it's longer that wouldn't quite fit on an ep and fit on an album or as a single so this you're gonna listen to it and you're gonna go oh you know, cool. <laughs> be able to help it you know <laughs> i think uh it's very dynamic too yeah yeah i i think it's like listening to your whole discography and like seeing you guys live and, and uh, all of that I think like this is my favorite song just cause as you kinda said like all like you hear like all the, like, the influences styles all of that kinda just fit into this song and I think it rocks a little more I think it's like you're putting your guys own like style and flair on it uh, that it's sounding like that is like the hourglass sound to it yeah I think that's a good way to describe it too thank you very much I think yeah. uh we're a lot. <laughs> yeah, I have to make you guys sound good. <laughs> no, I think we're a lot better than we were last year. I think you got a good yeah. point on that too, though, because yeah, with the uh, well, like Andrew said, we've gotten better since last year too. But uh, crap, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought. But you see what I'm saying, anyway. <laughs> well, when we did the EP, that was our first time in a studio. Yeah. So going in this time, we knew a little bit more how to. I don't think you ever know like exactly what to do, but we knew a little bit more of what we were doing. <laughs> And um, yeah, and we just kind of, you know, at, at that point we were more comfortable as a band. We, like he said, we knew what we were doing. So it's not like we just came in here and we're looking around like, oh, this is a studio. That's I mean, what we did the first we, time. We still kind of <laughs> looked around and said, oh, this is a studio. But we knew what to do in the studio this time. But then too, and, uh, after, uh, yeah, after knowing Andy uh, for so long, who runs the studio and he runs GNA Music, the music store, uh, he's very supportive of us too. So it was. Like, I don't know, we, we already knew what to expect going in, which helps kind of like, I don't know, you don't think too hard is a thing. Uh, and then playing shows, we played we played this like all year at all of our shows, I think, so we knew the song pretty well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, being more like familiar, like with, hey, we're going to go into the studio, we're actually, I think being more comfortable uh, playing in a studio, I think really helps. I think definitely, and, and you guys, have, I've seen the progression for you guys. I think you guys are definitely getting uh, better, like, you know, live and also in the studio. So, do look forward to seeing what else you guys have in, have in store. But please check out and uh, stream Mo Moonchild. It'll be available on September 21st. It is a Tuesday, as we said. So, if, you, if you're looking for some new music on a Tuesday, check it out. That's how releases used to be, by the way, was on Tuesdays, not Fridays. That's true. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think then, it went uh, up until like 2013 or something. Yeah, like. a few years ago. And then, um, too, we were thinking like more people are on their phones on Tuesdays and Fridays. 
That's a good point. More people are bored on Tuesdays than Fridays. Yeah, so they Friday might, usually yeah, have they stuff might to try do. to soothe that boredom. So you're, you're not going to think about, oh, I wonder what Hourglass put out today. You know, people should think of that. Like, you should, yeah. but you won't. <laughs> <laughs> so but you should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, like, if you had to pick of the day of the week where you uh, where you're probably not doing something, Tuesday's a good call. Yeah, it, it is because like you know, like Wednesday it's already the middle of the week. You know, Thursday, Friday, weekend mostly, um, and then obviously the actual weekend. So, yeah, I can see Tuesday. Tuesday's good. Yeah. Tuesday's gone. <laughs> it's the wind, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, with that out of the way. Um, so earlier this year, you guys released released two live cuts of uh, live music. There we go. Uh, from the Muse on Main. <laughs> yeah. Fort uh, Wayne. Yes, in Fort Wayne. Uh, I, I, it's a cool venue. I've been there before. Uh, so how was it, how was that show? And then I got follow up question for that. But how was that show? Who were you playing with? We're and, playing with uh, Rags and Riches, which you interviewed them, right? Yes, I yeah. did twice. They're really nice guys. Uh, yeah, they're cool that. dudes. Punk band waiting for Daisy. I don't think they're around anymore. Um, uh, that was like our third show. Yeah, I think that was our that was our third full show. Our second with TJ. Yeah, it was you know. fun. Uh, there wasn't that many people there, but it was it was a good time. Uh, I remember like listening back. They would live stream all their shows at yep. the Muse on Main. And um, like listening back to it the next day, we're like, "Oh man, we sounded so good!" <laughs> and uh, we're like, "Oh, we should put this out." And um, then like, so we kind of forgot about it for a while. <laughs> and then after we played a few shows earlier this year, then we Alec uh, reached out and got the uh, the recordings from um, the guy Dylan, I think is his name. Yes. And. Um, and we listened to it back we're like oh we're a lot better now <laughs> yeah and we were still thinking about releasing it like the cover for that um i had it the idea so good. and so it good. i was like okay i knew tj is good at designing stuff so i had made the the faces and whatever for our guitar picks and i made one for tj and so him and i were throwing ideas back and forth on the cover and uh then uh yeah we we're like all right look at that this looks like an actual album cover. <laughs> so it does, it does we were going nice. to put out the, the album on CD and everything, and we're like, well, maybe we're not going to do that. <laughs> not it's, that it sounds well, bad, but... The like, other thing, too, is we, we played Moonchild there. That's the first time we played it was there. And um, listening back, I'm like, I don't want that to be the first time people hear it because it wasn't up to the standard that we ended right. up making it to. Um, so perhaps so sometime in the might, future yeah, we'll we might out. put out the rest, but that's the only reason that we did the two songs yeah. instead of... Maybe on a box band. set in about 30 years. And uh, we're working on a Moonchild cassette. I'm working on a Moonchild yeah. cassette. <laughs> and the, the B-side from Moonchild is going to be those two songs from Live at the Muse on Main with a cassette exclusive bonus track which is just the third song from the uh, thing because I figure why not just throw an extra thing on there other thing about that show I remember is uh Alan had these huge palm trees that he just had in his, in his car. <laughs> yep. And he's like, oh, I got these palm trees in my car. Do you think that would look good in here? And somebody was like, yeah. And everybody else was like... <laughs> <laughs> I saw them there, though. I saw them on the stage. At uh, least it's easy to tell like when you look at those pictures. Oh, yeah, that's that show. <laughs> See, I also, I also brought this know. cooler of beer because they don't sell, sell yeah, beer at the venue. They have a soda bar. And then my friends brought beer and... Um, <laughs> So I had my cooler on stage, and you can see on the live stream if you go back and watch it. It was, I think, it was what September twenty sixth, twenty fifth, last year. So the yeah, and uh, you can see me like walking to my cooler, just taking out beers to hand them out like ten times before we actually play. And he checked the IDs of everybody, so don't. He was just, yeah. you know, yeah. But it didn't sell any. That's true. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they don't sell any. No. Um, I had I had two McDoubles on top of my amp on stage because I was hungry, but I didn't eat them during the set. That would be interesting. Uh, that's a good that's a good stage decoration. Yeah, so. yeah, the, McDoubles. At the end of the nice set, advertising. when I was crediting everybody, I said that Alec plays drums, but he doesn't. <laughs> you know, gonna take that up now. Well, I, I I could play drums if I was playing drums, I would be playing drums, but just not very well. <laughs> yeah, <It> was, <laughs> and I wasn't was, playing uh, drums at that time. It was either. fun. <laughs> It was, it was a fun time. 
Yeah, no, but, uh, uh, yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Are you gonna? Did you want me to talk about the songs that we put out there? Well, I was going to. Okay, you go for it. Uh, for, I, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that was discussed. I haven't got a chance to put a word in. Sorry. Uh, how many people do you know I have a cassette player anymore? No, Not a lot. A couple. <laughs> really, the reasoning for it was just because I have a cassette player. Ah, so <laughs> it's really like just cassettes. for you. Yeah, well, because my dad didn't used to let me use CDs because he didn't trust me when I was little, so he would make me cassettes, and I'd yeah. play cassettes on my Wiggles uh, player. So it, and so, they're, to me, they're kind of nostalgic, and uh, I just think they look cool, and... Uh, you know, that's sort of getting more popular now, whether people actually play people them or not, just out, as though. a novelty, you yeah. know? So, you can look uh, at it, at least. We might not sell all of them, but people might buy them, and uh, I've already... Had, we, believe it or not, we've actually had people ask us, like, are you guys going to make hourglass cassettes? And it's a much cheaper really? people option. Ask than, <laughs> people ask me that, anyway. It's a much that's cheaper right. option than vinyl. Maybe not quite as cool, but, you know, it'd be cool to stick it on your shelf or something, a Moonchild cassette. Limited edition, you know. Yeah. I mean, it is a throwback. Uh, I mean, I I like buying stuff I can use, so I don't have a, a cassette player. But that's just me. That's understandable. So, uh, my my right. my first car had a cassette player. Ah. Uh, but now I, I moved. Mine up, too. I moved up three years, and it only has a CD player. So people are like, oh, you just stream this Rest song while you're peace. driving, and I go, I can't. I have one option. You get one of those um, Bluetooth radio transmitter things. That's what I got in my car. Oh really? Yeah, you put it in the uh, outlet, and then you. Connect it to Bluetooth, and then that transmits to the radio, and you just turn it on that channel. Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> See? The See? future. <laughs> yeah. But first get a cassette. Yes. That's An your first hourglass option. cassette. Yeah. Once those actually come out, if they come out. Well, or you just get one for yourself and be like, ha-ha, limited to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yes, I was going to touch about the two songs... Uh, you guys put out for that live guy. I just want to talk about the cassette because I just thought that was it was cool and weird at the same time, but it was cool. All right, uh, so which two songs did you wind up picking, and how is like the the process of like which songs you wanted to put out? Um, let's see. So we put out a song called Velvet Morning, and then we put out a live version of She'll Be Coming Soon. Um, so let's see. I picked those, and I said, "Too bad. This is what we're putting out." Uh, no. Well, we, we're going to put out Velvet Morning because that's one that we didn't record on the EP. Um, so I thought that was a good thing to put out kind of in the limbo between the EP and uh, Moonchild, which comes out September 21st. If you uh, don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that version sounded pretty good, so we put that out. There was there was another original that we played. Do we play Are You Ready For My Love? Yeah, yep. it's called Are You Ready For My Love? And I didn't think it sounded that good, so we didn't put it out. Um, but Velvet Morning, I thought I thought that would be a cool one just to put out. I thought it sounded good. I liked it as a single. Thank you. Yeah, people people seem to dig it. Um, we might do like a real recording someday. Um, let's see. She'll be coming soon. I picked that one because uh, it's different than the EP version. It starts out so like the EP we kind of did it differently because we were in the studio. Um, but live we do it a little there's like a little change at the beginning and it's a little heavier um, so I thought that would be a good one to put out because it's, it's different than what's already out so yeah, there's plus two we little thinking, special nuggets originally too when we were looking at that we were like okay maybe we'll just do Velvet Morning and then we decided well let's just throw since we have the EP songs on there everybody already knows that it's not going to hurt to just add mm, yeah. a song from the EP on there so then it's kind of cool too like Andrew said it's different from the EP version, the studio version, but then you can kind of compare it to, you know, like you can listen to the EP version and then listen to the live version. Both sound good, both are different, you know, but uh, you can go on your little hourglass adventure and say, wow, this is real nice, you know. <laughs> In case you didn't get enough of the first version, there's the second one. <laughs> yeah. And then the third version. Yes, that'll be coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after world domination. That's right. <laughs> Still working on it. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoy the uh, the two live cuts, and again, you can stream uh, and check out all of those on all the streaming platforms. I really like because like I like live music because you actually get to hear how a band will sound live. Most of the time, mm -hmm. it's hard to fake. If, if you sound bad, it's hard to fake you sound good live. <laughs> uh, even though people try, uh, but it, it, I like it. I like live music because um, you actually feel like 
wow, this is how they sound like. And this is like, this is cool. I actually hear them live. So I think, I think it's cool. I think more people should do live. I know it's kind of hard. I mean, it helps the Muse on Main that they actually have the yeah. setup to record live. And they do it all the time. Yeah. yeah so for, they do it for every show. And they, mm. they, I know they put out like, uh, like uh, every month they put out like, oh, here's who's been here. And they put out mm. the music and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it, as good as a studio recording can be, there's always like a certain energy in live music. Yeah. And, you know, and to tie it back to Moonchild as well, as we're doing that, uh, <laughs> that was recorded live in the studio. So that's got, I think, I mean, so was the EP, but that <laughs> had a lot of additions and stuff onto it. But uh, still, when it's just live, live, even compared to something recorded live in a studio or bit by bit, um, it's just, yeah, it's got something else to it. You know, no matter what band it is, it, I don't know, not that you, you can say it's better or, or worse or whatever, but it's, it's just something different. And uh, for a lot of people, it's fun. And I, like you said, definitely enjoy live music, you know. Yeah, I, I love live music. As I think, if if you've been watching this, thank you. Uh, you know, watching all my shows. But yeah, I, the live music is awesome because you get to be around people who like the same music as you, and you get to see the band who you like perform live, uh, which I think is awesome. But to go to your point about like studio, uh, recorded live in a studio, and like kind of like recorded in pieces and parts, uh, it's got like that movement to it. It's got that energy to it that even though there's no live crowd to it it's still mostly recorded live. Um, and I know quite a few bands who still do that. And it just, it just it hits differently. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't feel as like stale or just kind of pieced together or kind of by the numbers. It's what yeah. they did back in the day. Yeah. Back in my day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, that could be. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's cool. I, I like bands who do that. I know uh, a few bands who still do that, like, you know, record it live. And I think it's awesome. Yeah. Because you pretty much, that's how they're going to sound. You say, man, they suck. <laughs> I'm not going to go see them. <laughs> yeah, you can, uh, easy, Good easy thing to put out that live single, because now I know I, I don't thought like about it. Going, but I'm not going to now. <laughs> man, this is what they're going to sound like live? Uh, I'm not going to go see them. <laughs> I don't blame you. Hold the plug now. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, uh, well, I was going to talk about this. Unfortunately, uh, your drummer TJ could not make it. But he's like a special mission tonight. Yes, he, he is. He's a busy man. Yes. He's, uh, I was trying to think of something clever, and I couldn't on the spot. <laughs> That's but, okay. Um, oh, he's, uh, he's skydiving from, uh, from, from uh, space. Mount Fuji. <laughs> if he, well, the one guy actually did it. He went all the way up into space and then sky skydived all the way down. Ooh. So TJ's doing that. Yeah. He Definitely. A secret agent. He's gonna hit the ground safely, though. Yes, I hope so. The other yes. guy did too, but oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess I wouldn't just jump out from space. <laughs> he had a parachute. Good point. Man. Good point. <laughs> I mean, you could try it. Yeah. It would probably be a fun time until you see the ground. <laughs> It'd be cool to have like those uh, flying squirrel wing things, you know? Hmm. I would always get because like one wrong move, you're going 100 miles an hour into a rock. Same thing with the parachute. You don't have that. that. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we're getting off topic. Um, so, like, how did um, how did he come into the band? How has it been uh, working and playing live shows with him? Um, well, our old drummer disappeared 13 days before <laughs> our uh, EP yeah. show. We were sitting at Hope Ping House when Andrew and I got the news. We were having lunch. And, uh, Ruined your lunch. He's like, hey, I'm uh, not going to be there for the EP show. And we're like, all right, see ya then. And then <laughs> well, uh, we were like, okay, any drama of it though. Yeah, so, well, no, there's no drama, but I mean, no. like, that's what happened. Yeah. And uh, we're still friendly with him. We still talk to him. Um, but yeah, so then uh, we were like, well, crap. Who who do we get to um, replace him? So we knew TJ because we knew Medicine Wives. They were some of the first people to sort of help us out and actually, you know, talk to us instead of shunning us or whatever. <laughs> and. Uh, so we just messaged TJ and asked him to ask him to help with that one first show, and then we we're like, well, okay, that sounded good. Could you help us with this other one that we're scheduled for in Fort Wayne? And then and then it was sounding really it good. Just yeah, we we're like, okay, we'll we'll just keep going as long as we can with that. Yeah. So yeah. he's doing double duty. That's and right. It works. Yeah. Well, I, I thought he died uh, the weekend of the 20, 20, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. <laughs> he almost what did. happened? Because uh, of how many did he have? Four or five sets that weekend? I don't remember. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he was with three bands because he was filling them with zero. Yeah, because the drummer went to went out of town. And yeah, like, he had an emergency come up. I think. Um, yeah. So let's see. So, Medicine Wives set. Yep. Our set. 
Zero, cover. zero set, and yeah. then two sets Saturday. So five sets. Yeah, he did five, five sets in three days, which in uh, two days. Was there some on the twenty second? No, no it's two days. Two right. days. Uh, so yeah, five sets in two days is insane. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, he's he, he's a beast on uh, drums. Yeah, uh, I've seen him obviously with Medicine Wives, you guys, and Zero that weekend. It was a lot of fun. Uh, oh. For me, just watching, yeah. not having to drum five sets, <laughs> once, once I had a great time. <laughs> uh, that weekend was fun. It was like a big party. It was awesome. Yeah, no, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I kind of felt a little bad for him after Friday, after three sets on Friday. He was tired, but he said he loved it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> doing stuff like that, like on the occasion, we're like, oh, this weekend I got to pull off five sets. I mean, <laughs> if you ever do like every weekend, you'd probably hate it after a while. Yeah, but maybe once in a while. So. Yeah. But it also shows, I mean, you can you can play in three different uh, bands. Like, I mean, obviously, you guys mess the wives. You know, it's still in rock and roll, but you guys have different styles yeah, to each yeah. other. And then, like, playing cover, having to learn cover songs. Oh, and that, that was, a, those are long sets for cover bands, yeah. too. Like, two or three hours, you know, and he learned that, I think, within a week or two, right? Yeah, he had, like, a week's notice, I yeah. think. So, learning all that and playing with you guys and Medicine Wives, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's insane, but it was cool. Good work, teacher. It was really cool to watch. <laughs> I got you one of these. Hey. Oh. <laughs> See? We keep it clean here. Yeah. <laughs> we keep it clean here at Super Cool Radio. Always. A whole lot of Clorox. Alright, so a couple fun questions for... <laughs> I just got that. A <laughs> uh, couple questions as I'm wrapping up this interview. Some fun questions. So, uh, if you guys collaborate with any living artists on a future song, who would it be? Alec, yeah, you go first. <laughs> I don't know. Cut any living artists? Like yeah, it could be local, it could be just the band you like, or oh. uh, artists you like. If you had the opportunity to collaborate with them on a song. Hmm. Writing, recording, playing with. Andrew's not going to like my answer, but I'm going to say Yoshiki from X Japan. If, <laughs> if you familiar. know who he is, then good. If you don't, he's a drummer, pianist, guitarist, What'd songwriter, or whatever. No, not that. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> we keep it clean. Either here. way, he's like... Really talented musician, producer, and all that stuff. He's done stuff for the Emperor of Japan and uh, does really? metal punk ballads, and it's just like he can do anything. So like, might as well use his talent if I could. But I'm not, I'm not rich or Japanese, so I yeah. mean, I, I wouldn't have two those strikes. kind of contacts. <laughs> I'm sure. You, I mean, you guys are hourglass. Yeah, yeah. What'd okay. you guys take off? You Yoshiki, about it? do something with us. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> watching right now. <laughs> All right, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, have you, have you enough time to think of this? Danzig. No, Danzig. <laughs> no not, I, I'd be afraid to work with yeah. Danzig. He'd, he'd tell me that we suck. Which probably right. Right. But uh, I feel like other people say the same thing. They do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, um, I like. I think working with Highly Suspect would be cool, or like Royal Blood, maybe. I don't know. Hey, you guys Royal Blood would be tight. They're two of the new bands that I like, so. Which I guess they're not that new anymore, but yeah. they were new to me when they're I new enough. When yeah. they were new, <laughs> they're new to me. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, cool. Final answer. I, I mean, I like it. I think. Um, what about you? Who would you work with? For you guys? Well, obviously, I don't have a band. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. If you... All right. Well, cool. All right. Well, okay. I'm gonna do a local band, and then I'm gonna do a band. I think you guys will work well with. All right. Uh, I think local band. You guys, the Magic Cat would be cool. I, I'd love to play with Magic Hat sometime. I still got to see Magic Hat. They're good. I haven't you seen. You got to see them. I haven't, yeah. met, I haven't met them, but they're really good. I, they're they're cool dudes. They really yeah. are. I, I think you guys because like you kind of you're both kind of in that like kind of almost classic rock style. But I know their their stuff's super intricate. Yeah. With everything they do. They're crazy good. But I think that'd be cool. Like you and Keith sharing vocals would be cool. Uh, and like the guitar work of Jim is insane, so I think, yeah. I, I think that would be cool. So Magic Cat, I hope they're watching this. Uh, you guys and Hourglass should do a song together. That'd be cool. Yeah, they're awesome. They're one of my favorites. They're one of my favorites to see around here. I've seen them a couple times. Yeah, they're they're always they're they're always pull out like just um, but uh, they did Girls Got Rhythm by ACDC. That's how they closed out a set once. Nice. Uh, they, they bust out the mandolin if it's a longer set, which I think is cool because I never, That's awesome. I've never seen that before, <laughs> and I don't think I'll ever see a band like that again. Uh, who like play rock and roll but incorporate a mandolin? That's pretty badass. But like, yeah, we play rock and roll, but here's a mandolin with rock yeah. and roll. I give that one of those. <laughs> uh, and then, all right, so a band, 
Uh, I was trying to think as I was talking because I did not expect to answer this because I'm the host. <laughs> um, the tables have turned. <laughs> I would say... I would say you guys and... Definitely not blanking on this. Because um, I feel like there's a lot of obvious ones, but I'm like, I, I don't know. Um... I'm trying to think of people you might know. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, that makes total sense. Instead of, who's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I would say... Uh, give me one second. <laughs> it is? Okay. Here we go. I totally, I totally got this. I'm definitely not stalling. <laughs> uh, you guys... And uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna say you guys are not gonna know who she is, but uh, Ellie Venable. She's a really awesome blues guitarist from Texas. I've had the opportunity to interview. She's really cool because she plays like blues, but also kind of like uh, classic rock, hard rock, that kind of stuff. So look her up because she's cool. I, well, I like, her. I like the blues. So there we go. I totally didn't stall for that <laughs> answer. No. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. Not at all. So yeah, you should check her out because I've interviewed her. Will do. All right. One more fun question that I will have an answer prepared for. All right. Uh, but you don't have to ask me. <laughs> uh, so what, what music have you guys been listening to this week? Mm, Alec first. I feel like that's he defers to you a lot first. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to, I, I just got a CD. Uh, I don't know if it's a bootleg or official release of... Uh, <laughs> It sounds good anyway. T Rex live in 1977, like a couple months before Mark Boland died. Oh, and wow. it was uh, not quite punk T Rex, but you know he was going that way with the damned opening for him and stuff like that. So it was more more hard rock than the earlier stuff. I thought that was cool. And then uh, I know I probably mentioned Grand Funk in every interview, but I've been listening so, to yeah. Grand Funk again. Yeah. <laughs> you already mentioned them earlier in this interview. Too. I did, I did, I did. But yeah, you must be a fan. Uh, perhaps <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, uh, in terms of this week, yeah, that's, that's about it. You know. Oh, that's solid. I haven't listened too much to T Rex, but what I have listened to, I liked. Yeah, it's good stuff. You know, it's it's interest. There's a lot of interesting like. There's the early stuff that's like acoustic and just weird folk music, and then there's like the middle like glam rock stuff, and yeah, most and whatever the end turned into like disco rock or something. Disco I don't know. It's, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I most of us to to the glam rock era of stuff. Yeah, but I enjoy it all. The weird really. stuff is weird though. Like the early yeah. stuff is weird. It is <laughs> weird. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Little Tyrannosaurus Rex. I hope Andrew has an answer for me. I do. Okay. I remembered what I was listening to. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, yeah, I bought a I bought a Freddie King live CD. Uh, I think it's a bootleg, but Freddie <laughs> King guys live. Are bootlegs. <laughs> Freddie King live was so good, so good. There's so many tasty blues licks on that one. Uh, listen to that a lot this week. I listened to Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys a couple times. Nice. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I'm listening to Cleopatra lately. They're a newer band. They're Canadian, a, eh? and uh, I like them a lot. So they just put out an album last month, I think. I'll check them out. Last month or in July, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, they're they're cool. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, I just got another CD that is official, but it was like bootleg recording, I think. Of <laughs> Fear live in the early '80s. Fear. It's oh. like two. Um, two discs of two live shows and uh it's, it's real macho like punk rock music and really offensive stage banter and it's just entertaining all around <laughs> <laughs> you guys buy bootlegs that's uh hey, what's no. official leave ing sign in the cover bootlegs, also, yeah. bootlegs are really cool i encourage if you really like a band or an artist or anybody if you can find like bootlegs like live shows it's really cool it's really yeah. raw it's fun and, uh, stuff. They don't fix their mistakes, obviously, because it's not sanctioned by them. <laughs> I, well, I think my only disclaimer with that, because like, there's good bootlegs, and bad. Like, if it's you can get a bootleg that sounds absolutely like crap. There are some yeah. very bad. If you bootlegs. bootleg us, we'll be mad at you because you're not paying us. But <laughs> they also take the time to bootleg you. I mean, come <laughs> That's on. True. That's, well, I guess yeah, we'd be honored. You, yeah. you could bootleg us. At just don't level. like make fake versions of real things. But the, that would also not be a real reason to do that either. But they do that of other bands, you know. 
Then you're trying to buy something that you think's official, and then it's not, and then you're all confused, you know? I'm going to start bootlegging your guys' stuff and saying, yes, this is endorsed by Hourglass. Man. <laughs> yeah, they told me. <laughs> or I'll, or I'll, I'll drop the H. <laughs> it was <still> Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second to realize what uh, you said. I was like, <laughs> so, so yeah. Some of my friends were going to start a fan club called uh, Horglass. I just licked my lips when he said that too. Now I just <laughs> Alec, now we're getting now we took a, we took a turn here. Uh, for like they're not serious. It's just a joke. They're not serious, but I hope not. Anyway. <laughs> you never know. But if you want to be serious with it, you can make the Hourglass Fan Club <laughs> a real one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, there was one band who I interviewed, and I thought it was the uh, I thought it was them because like it's uh, it was their page. You know, it said their name. And it followed me on Instagram. So I'm like, oh, is this your page? Like, no, someone took our name. And uh, so we had to change our, you know, we had to oh. take a different, like, yeah, like, they took, like, all the options for their name. I don't know how. It was like, and this, like. They must have really hated Yeah, that's what I was like. Did you do something, like, did you upset somebody somehow? I mean, that's. Yeah. To take the time to do that for a band who's like not like a, you know you know like not a well known you know like like a huge established band like I can see them messing with like like you know like Kiss like I've known you got banned by Twitter uh, from yeah. you know, uh, by Paul Stanley on Twitter yeah, there we go me. yeah uh, so I can see they mess with like that or something but like to like uh, you know a band a regional or local band that takes a lot of commitment and uh, a lot of time that you probably don't have to waste. <laughs> You could probably put to better use. You would think. You, you would think. <laughs> again, I mean. But you'll have that again. But anyway, so uh, this is who I've been listening to. It kind of falls in lines with you guys a little bit. I've been on a huge punk kick lately because I'm going to a punk show coming up. Uh, so I'm listening to Agent Orange. Hmm. Uh, and then Dead Kennedys. Uh, then the, obviously the bands who are going to be there, Mystery, Mystery Actions and the Evictions. Uh, so that's who I've been listening to, a lot of punk music. Obviously, I've been listening to Moonchild a lot because I do enjoy it, which comes out the 21st of September. Tuesday. Which is a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday. He keeps correcting me every time I say this. Anyway. No, I'm just hanging on to it. It's not a correction. <laughs> anyway. So that's what I've been listening to this week. I think it's, uh, so yeah, a lot of punk music because that's what I really like. <laughs> Because most of the time, even recorded, it's raw and gritty anyway. Yeah, some of it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, no, it, it is. It's it's fast, and you could probably play every song in about two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, as I'm wrapping up this interview, I do got one more thing before I let you guys go. So what is the future plans for Hourglass? How are you going to close out 2021 and looking into 2022? We're going to close out 2021 by beginning 2022. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to elaborate on that? Because <laughs> well, I have no idea what that no, means. Uh, well, once uh, one year gonna, ends, the next starts. We're going to write some more songs coming up this fall. Um, we talked about doing a couple of shows, putting them on ourselves. Uh, I'm not going to say anything we're thinking of because if we don't do it <laughs> oh yeah that's a we'll very good point. so uh but we're, we're talking about doing a couple things cool things okay uh, either putting it like us promoting it ourselves somewhere or doing something live on facebook or youtube or something uh there's always halloween possibilities there's new year's eve possibilities uh we're playing I'll plug this. We're playing, if you want to see us, the next time we're playing is October 15th at Saddle Up yes. Saloon in Mishawaka. We're yeah. opening for Mobile Death Camp. Um, that guy, the guy in that band used to be in Guar. Yes. Um, also on the bill is Chokesetter and I forget the other band. I'm sorry because I don't know them. Is it Spaceships? No. I thought okay. it was just uh, Mobile Death Camp, Chokesetter, and Hour. No, there's one between us and Choke setter. We're opening the show, so get so there. Yeah. Eight yeah, o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Eight o'clock. Other bands uh, probably cool too. Yeah. Yes. I, it starts with a B. It's B something assault, and I can't remember what the B was. Bipolar assault. assault. No. Well, that no. Those would make sense, but it's something oh. that I'm not sure how to pronounce. Oh, okay. like probably why I can't remember what it is, but it starts yeah, with a B. But I'll, I'll leave a uh, event link in the yeah, description. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, I, uh, technology. I can do that. But yes, uh, so be there October 15th, uh, see them open the show uh, at 8 p.m. Bring your ID. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure. There's an inside joke there if people get it. Um, so anyway, so yeah, see them. So what can people expect from Hourglass show? Sorry, one more question. Yeah, so um, we, uh, um, we've 
been building it up lately this year. We have our own lights. We've got a siren. We've got a candelabra. Yes. Um, I've seen that. Uh, fire, fire, it's, it's safe though. Yeah. Fire code is... Yeah. But it's good. always important to have your extra guitars lined up on stage whether you use yeah. them or not because it looks good. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's all about the aesthetic. Yeah. We, we always play all of our originals. Um, throw in a couple covers if we have to. Um, but they're not... Like, it's not Journey, so they're cool. And, um, uh, yeah, we hang out afterwards. We bring T-shirts. If you want T-shirts, Like CDs, this one? Stickers, uh, cassette tapes maybe at the next one. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, Matthew Thomas. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's a good time. We like to have a good time. Uh, like everybody to have a good time. If you sit down, I yell at you. Uh, I've seen him do that. You're not supposed to do that. It's not yeah, good. But it... Just check it out. It's not expensive, so. <laughs> and if <laughs> that's it, true, also. <laughs> yeah. And you're probably from from local from here, so why not? Why not show up and uh, support local bands yeah. and a local venue? Sorry Bill. to our international fans that we were only playing in the Michigan. Don't oh. say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we tour nationwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. They're going to Muskegon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so please check out Stream Support. Give a like to Hourglass. See them. When you can, uh, or October 15th, or yeah. something like that. Um, and please uh, stream and uh, check out Moonchild. It'll be available on Tuesday, September 21st. It's going to be awesome. I really enjoy it. So you. you guys should too, because I'm telling you, so it's true. Yeah. If you like guitar and drums and bass, guitar solos, you like this song. It's good. It, nobody likes bass. Yeah. You do. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, makes, well, I'm a nobody. <laughs> that makes one person. Anyway. <laughs> now, if, Metall if Metallica didn't need it in, in Justice for All, then you don't need it. That's Alex, right. That reminds me, i got to have a conversation with you after this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Dropping the bass. <laughs> you can't hear it. I'm just kidding. No, no I'm just kidding. There, of course, there's going to be bass. <laughs> now, like, unless, unless something happens to them. Well... Nothing uh, planned at the moment to happen to me, uh, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> anyway, stream support, give a like to them. I'm going to leave some links in the description for you guys to check out for Hourglass. As I said, Tuesday, September 21st. If you don't know, now you know. Moonchild will be released. Give it a listen. You're going to love it. For Andrew and Alec of Hourglass, I am your host as always, the Spirit of Super Cool Radio, Matthew Thomas. Thank you for watching or listening. Stay frosty.